Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I came with the new topic that is Viva or oral questions on practicals of digital communication. So what are the questions to be asked in the practical examination and uh, how you can give the answer of that questions. So let's start with this first question that is based on pulse amplitude modulation. So what is the pulse amplitude modulation? The pulse amplitude modulation is the transition of data by varying the amplitudes, voltage or power levels of the individual pulses in regularly timed sequence of electrical or electromagnetic pulses. Second question, what are the application of PAM that is pulse amplitude modulation? So the application, the first application is it can be used on Ethernet connectivity for broadband interface communication. It can be used in graphics cards for very high speed networking and as well as reduce the noise to signal ratio and it can be used to control signals in microcontroller and it is also used in all phone modems that are faster than 300 bits. The next question on pulse amplitude are what are the advantages of pulse amplitude modulation? So the answer is the first is transmitter and receiver circuitry is simple and easy to construct. Using conventional copper wire in large volume in pulse amplitude modulation so the data transmission can be made more effective, quick and efficient. Third advantage of pulse amplitude modulation is the base of all digital modulation technique and the final is pulse amplitude modulation is the simplest form of modulation than others. Now the next questions on digital communications. Uh, means it consists of all the practical so therefore we directly come on the digital communication so the state and application the types of pulse amplitude modulation so the the types of pulse amplitude modulations are double polarity pulse amplitude modulation and single polarity pulse amplitude modulation uh, these are viva questions so we don't go in the details regarding the explanation so now the next question is what are the disadvantages of analog communication so the disadvantage of analog communication is it's not reliable noise effect is more on the signals power required for signal transmission also more and circuit complexity is more and costly now what are the advantages of digital communication so it is more reliable noise effect is very less power consumption is very less various digital ic's are available so circuit not complex and cheap error detection and correction is also possible. Now digital communications again uh, what are the different types of digital modulation. So the first is ASK, FSK, PSK, PCM, DPCM, Delta modulation and adaptive Delta modulation. So these are the types of digital modulations. Now the next question is how to convert an analog signal into digital signal. So the first is blocks. What are the blocks? So we are using the anti-aliasing filter, sampler, quantizer and encoder. With the help of these blocks, we can convert analog signal into digital signal. So this type of the tricky questions can be asked in the VIVA examinations of your practicals. So now the next question is define the functionality of sampler or quantizer. So the first is sampler. Sam what does the sampler does? Converts a continuous time signal into discrete time signal. And what about the quantizer? It converts continuous in amplitude signal into discrete in amplitude signal. This is the difference between sampler and quantizer. Now the next is what are the sum coding techniques? So the pulse code modulation, differential pulse code modulation, delta modulation and adaptive delta modulation. These are the coding techniques. Now what is meant by sampling? So converting a continuous time signal into discrete end time signal is called as sampling. This question most probably asked in the digital practicals. Now what is the amplitude shift gain? It represents the digital data as a variation in amplitude in carrier wave. That is one represents by transmitting a fixed amplitude carrier wave for a bit duration with the constant frequency. 
Now the next question is what is PSK that is phase shift king. It represents the digital data as variations in phase shift in carrier wave that is one represent by zero phase shift carrier wave where zero represented as 180 degree phase shift in carrier wave for the bit duration with constant frequency. Now what is FSK that is frequency shift king. So the answer is it represents the digital data as a variation in frequency in carrier wave that is for one more than carrier frequency for zero less than carrier frequency. Now the next is what is binary phase shift king means BPSK. So for each one bit of binary data zero or one carrier phase will be changed to different shift that is zero or 180 degree that is binary phase shift king. What is quadrature phase shift king that is QPSK. So for each two bits of binary data that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1 carrier pair will be changed like four different shifts that is 45 degree, 135 degree, minus 45 degree and 135 degree. Now the next question says what is the difference between bit rate and baud rate. So the bit rate represents bit per second and baud rate represents number of symbols per second that is in communication the number of bits transmitted per second is called bit rate that is BPS and the number of time signal here is a carrier changes its state that is change in frequency phase or amplitude per second is called as baud rate. Now what is bandwidth of BPSK so it, if 2 FC because if FC represents carrier frequency there is a bandwidth of BPSK is 2 FC. Now that there is a comparison between ASK, PSK and FSK. So look at this there is a bandwidth that is ASK is less than PSK, PSK is less than FSK. Now as per consideration the power that is ASK's power is less than PSK and PSK is equal to the FSK power. Probability of error is this ASK is greater than PSK, PSK is greater than FSK. Now the signal to noise ratio that is ASK less than PSK and PSK less than FSK. Why is ASK called as an on off king? When input data is 1 then the output carrier then output is carrier and if input is 0 output is 0. So therefore so it looks like a switch which will switch on when input is 1 and off when the input is 0. So thank you friends for this you just read this questions and just to uh, watch this video more and more time and make more practice and all the best for your practical YY examinations of digital communication. Thank you. Thank you very much.